This is it, the supposedly greatest species of all, built for endurance, intelligent, strong. That was what they told us, a worthy opponent. They were all wrong against our mighty armada. Their ships were but a nuisance. Their soldiers were nothing but flies to our superior soldiers, able to cut them in droves. We thought we had found them, a species finally worth conquering, and yet again and again they disappoint us. We came to a galaxy of weakness. Every single world and its people now are a part of our empire. They lay on their knees as slaves. They called upon allies. They made a coalition to fight against our might. They failed. Every single one of them talked about a superior species that they are sure to win against us. They talked of their intelligence and thirst for war and conquest, and yet known to be the most peaceful, they say they are predator. Yet they feel empathy. How could a contradicting species even came to be? We had to find out. It took us a long time, and more than a hundred planets and species enslaved, before we came upon our long-awaited enemy. Their craft were blocky, filled with whatever kind of weapon one could muster. I could see battle scars on the hulls. Humanity is not foreign to war. We attacked first, determined to see the prowess of humanity. We were immediately disappointed as their weapons were unable to penetrate even our shields. A shame if they just had a bit more on the technological side. I was sure they would put up an even fight. We routed them, and we were orbiting the planet they were defending, and we found the populace to be hostile and fought with bravery. But we were far more technologically advanced than them. It was not easy, but not hard either. This cycle continued for a few years. We fought their route, and we conquered the planet. That was until the next battle, the battle started. But rather than commit to the battle, they simply unloaded ammunition, then left. A weird movement. We came to know this tactic as guerrilla warfare, wherein a force engages in skirmish killing as much as possible, then simply leaving before we could retaliate. This continued as we slowly advanced to the human home system. It was at what they call as Kuiper Belt that we faced true resistance. Thousands of ship now sporting unknown weapons were spotted. We were a few light years from the ship. When they began firing, we thought nothing of it. Their weapon were obsolete after all, that was, until a few of the ships blew up in dark void, disintegrating before our very eyes, they had score their first kills. We rushed into range in order to stop them from firing again. A few more ships lay waste, but we were in range. The battle was fierce and they fought like animals. We scored a few kills, but so did they. But we were far more numerous, so they fled, jumping into our equivalent of FTL. We held ground to repair and recover our lost forces. We had already requested for more fleets to our location. We bolstered our numbers and we advanced again. On the planet of Neptune, we engaged again in combat. The same happened at the Kuiper Belt, with us routing the human fleet. Again we stopped and bolstered our casualties. Both happened in Uranus and Saturn. On Jupiter ground campaigns had to be made. It seems the madmen called humanity had taken home on its moons, some of which they turned into fortresses. It took us around three months to take control of the moons before assaulting the planet. Being a hostile planet, we almost never had believed the rumors of human colonies on Jupiter were even possible if we had not scanned the planet. It took us even longer around a year to clear the planet of humanity. Most were enslaved, many fought and died, an admirable yet futile attempt. On the asteroid belt, humanity again employed their guerrilla tactics. Some ships were damaged, but not out of the fight. Then finally, Earth, the human homeworld, there we saw how gigantic the human ships really are. Thousands upon thousands of ships were blocking the planet, covering it like a big screen. We were now excited. A species will defend their homeworld fiercely. This we knew. It was about to be a good fight. The darkness of the void was filled with laser fire, cannon projectiles, missiles and more, blanketing the dark with the greatest fight of our lives. They fought bravely with courage and determination. They scored many kills, but then again they were far technologically inferior to us. 
Slowly but surely we whittled their numbers, for each one of ours took four or five of them. Three days we fought, but we were victorious. All of us had one thing in mind. Humanity gave us the greatest battle of our lives. The thrills we had long forgotten were like drugs to us. But alas, the fun was done, and we began the enslavement of the people of Earth. After a few hours, I was informed of a surviving admiral captured and contained, so I decided to speak with the admiral. The admiral was chained in the neck arms as well as the feet, so I ordered them to let him go. I walked down from my seat and stood in front of the admiral, seeing him eye to eye. Greetings, admiral. Forgive my people. They lack the courtesy to attend to your needs. I thank you for the greatest battle of our lives. I spoke, the human red rushing down from his forehead to his cheek, his attire battered and clearly burned in a few places exposing skin, looked me straight in the eye. Do not thank me. I thank you for bringing your entire fleet here, he said so defiantly, straightening himself. I did bring most of our ships to the battlefield, leaving a small contingent to protect our slaves. I do not understand, human. Your world is about to be conquered, and yet you stand there as if you had already won. Where does this confidence come from? I asked. As an explosion was heard, and yet we saw none of our ships were on fire nor blowing up. Weird. I forgot about the human. You think you won here? No, this is humanity's win. You came here expecting slaves and a world to conquer, but humanity would rather die than be stripped of freedom. You boast about your superior weapons and technology. It blinded you. Confidence overtook you, following your pride instead of thinking, this will be your end. He said, I noticed something weird about the planet, as if something was swallowing it from the inside. Not a few seconds later, my crew and myself knew what it was, a black hole in the center of Earth. All of those engagements were delaying actions. We planted an experimental device that would swallow the entire system. Run, if you will, but you won't be able to escape it. He said, we will never be slaves. We will never back down from a fight. And if we are to be defeated, we will take you down, no matter the cost. We will die here, and soon we will see each other in hell, and I will revel in your screams, he stated in defiance. Burn this into your souls, Xenos. This is what you get when you fight with us, he shouted, as the black hole grew larger and larger. I realized that this was all a trap. The planet must be empty, and in our foolishness we forgot to consider it. It was the last thing I heard as my ship was swallowed by the black hole.